Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Perez coming to you from Baltimore. Last May, thousands of torch-bearing protesters demanded the resignation of President Juan Orlando Hernandez in Honduras and called for a United Nations-backed commission like that of Guatemala, which forced the resignation of its president, Arto Perez Molina, in September of 2015. Honduras became embroiled in a corruption scandal when it was revealed that money from the healthcare system was funneled into the right-wing president's party, the National Party, that won the 2013 election. Now the Organization of American States have set up a mission to deal with the domestic corruption, which opponents claim is ineffective, or can be ineffective. And according to our next guest, Alex Main, Honduras continues to face organized crime, human rights violations by security forces, and high-level corruption. But the U.S. continues to lend it diplomatic support by backing President Hernandez. Alex Main is joining us today from Brazil. He's a senior associate for international policy at the Center for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Sharmini. Great to be on. So, Alex, um, in response to all of the corruption allegations, uh, the OAS has established um, a, a mission. Uh, tell us a little b about that venture and why people think it's going to be ineffective. Well, sure. So uh, this new mission came out of um, a movement of massive popular discontent in Honduras, which uh, really began, um, well, it's been going on for a long time, but it, it reached um, a really critical stage in late May and over the summer of last year, uh, when, as you'd mentioned, um, it was revealed that uh, millions of dollars from the National Health Care Fund had been diverted to um, the National uh, Party's campaign accounts. And it helped fund um, the um, election campaign of Juan Orlando Hernandez, the current president. Um, so this was sort of the one thing that uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, uh, in that I think people had been fed up with uh, the rampant corruption that existed for a long time on top of the um, extreme level of crime, uh, very high homicide rate, et cetera, and et cetera with, with incredible levels of impunity. Uh, and so they took to the streets uh, massively, um, possibly in uh, greater numbers than has ever been seen in Honduras's um, history. And suddenly things were looking very unstable indeed in um, Honduras. And so these um, crowds of protesters had essentially two demands. And one was the resignation of President Hernandez. And the other was the creation of uh, an anti-corruption commission along the same lines as the CCIG, um, uh, which has been a very successful um, anti-corruption and anti-impunity um, organization backed by the United Nations in Guatemala for the last seven years. And of course, at the same time, we were seeing a parallel protests occurring in Guatemala um, over a similar sort of uh, case of high-level corruption, and um, which was driven by the CCIG, uh, and that led to the resignation and jailing um, of the president there, Otto Perez Molina, and he's now facing trial. Um, as is the vice president. And, and I must add, it's unprecedented to have a president in jail awaiting trial. No, absolutely. Uh, well, sure, he did resign first, uh, but he, he, he resigned because of the charges against him uh, that were brought against him by this anti-corruption commission. So, uh, you know, this is a, was a very inspiring thing for the people of Honduras to see, uh, and they wanted to see something similar um, take place in Honduras, a similar sort of commission. Uh, so what had happened instead, um, Juan Orlando Hernandez did everything to sort of assuage people to try to make it look like he was listening to people by holding this sort of national dialogue uh, in which it was very clear that he wasn't going to make any concessions and so you didn't have any participation from key opposition actors. Uh, and then uh, the Organization of American States uh, got involved, I should say, with the heavy backing of the United States uh, government. And uh, they came up with what they sort of 
presented as a compromise solution, which was an anti-corruption commission, which they compared uh, to the CC in Guatemala. But um, when we saw the sort of final statutes um, around the creation of this commission appear, uh, and they only appeared really in January, it was very clear that it would be a rather toothless commission. It would not be able to independently investigate um, or prosecute um, you know, high-level corruption crimes uh, and crimes involving uh, you know, organized crime networks as we see in Guatemala. It would not be able to do that in Honduras. Instead, it would provide uh, and will provide, since this commission will now be so going Alex, into effect. So, Alex, what's the difference to, between the organization of American states constituting such a body and the United Nations constituting a body to deal with corruption that seems to have a bit more of a grip on uh, how to counter it? Well, I think there are two things. I think one is that uh, the United Nations now has a very good track record with the CC experience in Guatemala. And uh, they, they want to sort of get the, that experience uh, and have it applied to um, Honduras, uh, sort of a direct transfer, if you will. Um, and so the UN, of course, would be very helpful with that. And the other thing is that the OAS um, is seen as a much less impartial actor in Honduras than the United Nations is. Uh, and, of course, partly because the Organization of American States is seen as very close to the U.S. State Department and its And, it, and in fact, uh, its, uh, its main body is just down the street from the White House. That's right. The, the, the main body is sort of between the State Department and the White House in Washington, D.C., and it receives most of its funding. I mean, the bulk of its funding is coming from the, the, the United States. Uh, so there's really a sense that whatever the OAS does... In Honduras, it's going to be pretty much in line with what the U.S. State Department wants in Honduras. And so far, the U.S. State Department has a very bad record in Honduras of consistently shoring up uh, extremely corrupt governments um, in Honduras. Um, uh, not only corrupt, but I would say also with um, sort of repressive tendencies. Uh, and they've been doing this ever since the uh, 2009 coup that took place in Honduras, in which a left-leaning president, Manuel Zelaya, was removed from power. So, Alex, um, what next? Do you think the United Nations will move in and try to replace what the OAS is suggesting? No, I think that's rather unlikely um, at this present moment. Um, I think, uh, well, you have this new commission that will be starting its work just uh, next week. Uh, and, you know, obviously people want to give that a little bit of a chance. Uh, I can tell you that, you know, all of the human rights groups in Honduras and, and all of the people in the opposition to the current government, which uh, is a great many people, um, are extremely skeptical that this uh, commission will get anywhere. Again, it doesn't have the tools to act independently. It's just there to sort of support the attorney general's office. And the attorney general, of course, has been involved uh, to a great extent in protecting the National Party uh, from these corruption charges. Uh, so there's not really much hope that the current commission will get anywhere. Uh, I think it's likely that if it doesn't, and it only will if there's a lot of external pressure, um, and I don't think we can expect that from the U.S. And but unlike, if it and further, unlike uh, the situation in Guatemala, it doesn't look like President Hernandez is going to be offering up his resignation. Give us a sense of how the Guatemalan people succeeded in getting the attention of the United Nations and bring it to a head. Well, um, I mean, Guatemala has a very different history from Honduras. Uh, whereas in Honduras, you had uh, a, a sort of a clandestine, um, low-intensity inten war going on against uh, the left, um, the organized left forces in Honduras in the 1980s. In Guatemala, you had a full-fledged, enormous um, civil conflict uh, where, um, you know, death squads were backed uh, by the U.S. State Department for, for a number of years. Um, they were receiving, you know, indirect funding and so on. And so in, in Guatemala, you then had a peace process uh, that involved the United Nations, um, which was really very critical uh, for the transition of that country from 
the conflict to sort of a more peaceful and at least partial democratic uh, sort of system. And um, the UN remained uh, an important actor, a n relatively neutral actor in that country um, in terms of resolving political problems and, and also in terms of, of helping with sort of post-conflict justice. And in that role, um, it then developed this uh, new institution called the CICIG, uh, something, you know, over seven years ago now. Um, and uh, it played, has played an extremely instrumental role in um, really creating a more independent judiciary in uh, Guatemala and, um, and, and looking into some of the most egregious corruption cases, including, you know, the case against um, the last president, Otto Perez Molina, over the last summer. All right, Alex, uh, we hope to follow this uh, in the future and hope to have you back very soon. Thank you, Charmaine. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.